Kevadulam has two, three ministries under Kevadulam. If you're a student of the Bible, you would know that Kevadulam was a cave where David trained his warriors, the strong men that fought for Israel, that fought for the will of God in Israel. Praise the Lord. Under Kevadulam, we have the minister's rest. Ministers rest in the meeting for ministers, ministers of the gospel, pastors, evangelists, you know, who are called particularly to the fivefold ministry because it is the responsibility of the fivefold ministry to mature the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we have preparing his bride, a fellowship of God's people. Preparing his bride is a family fellowship, husband, wife, children, and we come to learn, we come to adorn ourselves with our bridal attire, waiting for the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ, he's our bridegroom. So the singular purpose of preparing his bride is to get the saints ready to meet the Lord Jesus, not to make the saints rich, not to make the saints famous, not to make the saints popular, but to make the saints ready, ready to meet her husband. Because we understand that it's not everyone who is called a Christian that would be the bride of Christ. We all think so, but a close look at the scriptures will tell us that it's not every every virgin that would enter. He gave us a very popular parable, the parable of the ten virgins. All virgins, all had oil, all had lamps, and they were burning, but not all could make it. Why? That's the reason for preparing his bride. Praise the Lord. So you don't run you know, without being circumspect. You don't run your race like one beating the air. You don't run your race and at the end you will say, what? I couldn't make it? After 70 years on earth of being a Christian? What happened? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we have the STNG. The STNG is securing the next generation. The ministry for young people um, because we know that young people must 
must carry the torch of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, we know that God is very, very, very interested in the young people. He's interested in the children. He's interested in the teenagers. I, our hearts are broken concerning the teenagers of this generation. And they all came from our homes. And most of our homes, most of the homes where these young stars came from, if you go and look, you will see that their parents are Christians. But what happened? So the focus of STNG is to secure this next generation. We're trusting the Lord that we will retrieve as many back as possible, particularly those who were born into Christian homes. We are particularly interested in them. Children who follow their parents to church. Children who talk about their father's God and their mother's God, but not their own God. Children who have a form of religion. They are very moral. They don't fornicate, they don't steal, but they don't know God. So they are victims of hell. Hell can take them with all the niceness. We are able to recognize that. And um, we've... we've God has helped us to raise young people. Some of the young people are my children. My first um, set of children, three of them, are all ministers of the gospel in sincerity. Hallelujah. And other young people of like minds, you know, last year we redefined cool. Cool means to be on fire for Jesus. Cool doesn't mean wearing, you know, pants that are hanging there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you're welcome to Devadulam. The reason I went, you know, through all of this is because some of you got invitation. Some of you are here because your husbands are ministers who come to the minister's rest. Some of you got invitation from preparing his bride. So you know exactly who is behind what we are doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Having been in this ministry for just one year, we have seen the need to bring the women together to heal the homes. That is our focus. We have found out that many women are heartbroken. Many women are crying. Many women are feel used. Many women are hurting. Many women are also breadwinners in their homes. And um, some women, not many, are married to, permit me to use that word, irresponsible men. Some. Some are married to men that have no faith. Some are married to men that do not obey the word. Now all of these women, plus those who are married to godly men, all of these types of men, God has made provision in the scriptures that they could have wives and through all their wives, salvation will come to that house. And that is the reason for this meeting. Salvation for our household. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just going to share very little from the scriptures and we interact. This is going to be a very highly interactive meeting. We're live streaming. Um, sometimes when we're going to be discussing very personal things, we will go off um, live stream, praise the Lord, because of privacy. But I want to assure, um, I want to assure every woman that is here that you are secure. Um, I'm going to be naked. My sister is going to be naked. We've worked together for 12 years, 14 years. Ministering to women in House on the Rock. Ministering to homes. She was the head of married, married women's meeting before she relocated to Canada. I was her assistant. She trained me. And then when she left, she's my mentor. She doesn't want to believe it. You believe, right? Yeah. Did you hear her pray? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when she looked out to Canada, <clears throat> I was her assistant. She handed, handed me that um, baton. And God helped us to 
to save many homes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not just save many homes, help many women find the path of righteousness. Because there are also homes that are peaceful, but there's no life. Eternal life is not there. And it, it's of no gain to you. It's of no eternal gain to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Quickly, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Before we do that, please let me introduce my guest speakers this morning. Um, I have with me Pastor Ayo Mowirola. Did I get it? Yes, it's that name. Yes. <laughs> that name is pronounced with an accent. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She's a minister's wife. She's a pastor's wife. She's a seasoned minister of the gospel. I've heard her. Um, you will need to hear her yourself. Praise the Lord. I don't like to sing praises of men. I don't want everybody to sing mine either. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then I have with me this beautiful, fair, fairer than them all lady. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's Chen Anokuru. Praise the Lord. She's a woman that the Lord has helped. I think I would, if I would, if I were to name you, I would call you Chinyer Ebenezer. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Ebenezer means the Lord is my helper. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell yourself the Lord is my helper. Lord is my he is not a partial God though. Yes. What he can do for one, he can do for another. Yes. Everything is in your hands. It depends on you. Is in your hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. Colossians chapter 1. I know a lot of women are expecting me to go to First Peter chapter 3, husbands, wives. No, 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 we're not going there today. You all know the scripture, you can preach it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this cause, we also, are we there? Yes. Praise the Lord. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. If you have a Bible, I want you to underline that that sentence. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Hallelujah. Now, before I continue speaking, I want to beg you to give me your ears. I don't mean your outer ear. I mean your inner ear. The reason I'm begging for your inner ear is because I've also seen that many people have been hearing this truth, yet it's not producing results. It's not producing a walk. So there's a reason why they are not hearing. They are not hearing. Because Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and will follow me. So if I'm not following, it means I'm not hearing. Praise the Lord. But I'm in church on Sunday. Particularly if you come to this meeting, if you come to preparing his bread or you attend minister's rest, you ought to be hearing. But I found out that everybody's not hearing. So I want to appeal to you, please, as much as possible, give us, give the Holy Spirit your ears and hear from your inner ear, the ear of your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, all wisdom, in all wisdom, so the wisdom that I need to be a mother is there. If I would comprehend or understand his will, if I can come into the knowledge of his will, 
then automatically what follows is also understanding or receiving let me use that word all wisdom wisdom as a mother wisdom as a wife wisdom as a sister wisdom as a friend wisdom as an employee wisdom as an employer wisdom as an entrepreneur wisdom as a child of god praise the lord all wisdom and spiritual understanding one of the greatest things that Satan has used to cheat the church is we thinking that it's all about this earth hello one of the things that Satan has used to cheat all of us is all of us thinking that the whole essence of go to nursery school, go to elementary school, go to university, find a husband or a wife, have children, your children, you, you train them through the same things you've gone through, or a better one, if you have more money, praise the Lord, get a job, make money, aspire to be better every year you in january if you call people uh, people's phones what you hear is uh, what what was that ringing tone again <coughs> eh? no 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 by is b square that sang that song isn't it <laughs> what is that song testimony. testimony. Uh -uh. It's not testimony. I'm making money. I'm making money. I'm making money. I'm making money. I'm making money this year. This year. This year. This year. <laughs> One of my daughters one of the kids we have upstairs, she had an encounter with Jesus on the day of immersion. The kids' immersion we had here, she saw the Lord. And, you know, she had a wonderful encounter with Jesus. And when she got home, her mother's phone rang and she heard that ringing tone. She told her mom, Mommy, take away that tone. Twelve-year-old girl. She said, that, 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 that ringing tone is not spiritual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So Satan has made us think that it's all about this world. And then for those who are worried about eternity, they've given their lives to Christ. And Satan has also deceived us into thinking that it's just, let me just make heaven. So you see a lot of people say, if I can just make heaven. But there's a higher purpose than just making heaven. Praise the Lord. And, and it is spiritual. Bible calls it spiritual. I must come into spiritual understanding. It means ability to understand spiritual things. Ability to comprehend spiritual realities. Praise the Lord. If I understand the knowledge of his will, I will come into the wisdom to understand spiritual truth. Now, when I understand spiritual truth, I understand spiritual realities. I understand the knowledge of his will. Look at what it will do to me in verse 10. This is the reason for all this. That she might walk worthy of the Lord. How many of us here know what walk means? When you open your Bible and you see walk, walk in the flesh, walk in the spirit, walk worthy of the Lord, walk in the light. How many of us know what it means? Let me see your hand. If you understand the meaning of walk, say a Christian who is walking. Let me see your hand. Hi, hi, hi. Praise the Lord. So many don't understand what it means to walk. Hmm. Praise the Lord. That you might walk to walk means to do as God wants me to do. Simply put, that's what it means.
To walk means to do as God wants me to do. If God wants me to keep quiet, I keep quiet. As I keep quiet, I am walking. Hallelujah. If God wants me to forgive, I forgive. As I forgive, I am walking. It's a walk. Now, because it is not in the natural, you, can, you are not able to see it. But if they were to see you in the spirit, this is what you would have been doing. This is what your spirit man is doing. It's walking. Where is it walking to? Towards God. It's walking towards the Father. Now what has happened is that Jesus has come to save us. And the reason why he has come to save us is to bring us to the Father. He didn't come to save you so that you will go to heaven. You will go to heaven. But some people will go to heaven, they will not be with the Father. We don't know it. Please, if you don't know it, uh, yesterday's message, Saturday's message is not yet. Pastor James, is, is your first one around? Yes. Is the CD out for Saturday's message? Please find out. Get the message for Saturday, Saturday's meeting we had here. It might explain that to you very well. Jesus saved us to bring us to the Father. That is the purpose of salvation. That's the reason why you became a Christian. You will not go to hell, but apart from not going to hell, your purpose is ready. Beautiful. Is to journey to the Father. To meet the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you do not eventually meet the Father, or let me put it this way, if you do not eventually become the bride of Christ, you will regret. You will regret. It will not be the regret of those who are in hell. But you will regret so bad. Because you knew you had the potential. You had everything. He gave you everything to be there. It's not like those who are in hell. Those who are in hell, let me tell you the truth. If you bring them out of hell, give them another 50 years to live on the earth, at the end of that 50 years, they'll go back to hell. God is a just God. Everyone who goes there is worthy of that place. I believe that God will save some people between the time when their breath will leave their nose to when they exit the earth totally. Somewhere between that journey, I believe so. So long as you have the heart to say yes to Jesus, he will meet you even at the gates of hell and pull you back. That's how deep God's love is. I can't prove it in the Bible. I say I believe it. I didn't say it's not a doctrine. So I'm not preaching it as a doctrine. I'm just saying what I believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So each time God says, forgive, you are journeying towards the Father. Each time God says, let go, you are taking a step towards the Father. Hallelujah. Each time you receive a spiritual instruction that will deaden self, kill self, man, self, that will kill me, my wants, my pleasures, my desires, my will. Each time you see an instruction of the word of God or from God's word or from the Holy Spirit that will make you feel me, Uncle, what about me? And, you know, there's a scripture that says we should consider the others above ourselves. Not just before, but above. And also esteem the other better than yourself. Now, each time I submit to that, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm taking steps in the spirit. I'm coming closer and closer to the Father. 
Some of us still don't understand. You still think I'm telling some fabu story. I'm not. Let me tell you, you know, in two or three sentences, I want us to interact so we can heal. Jesus said something. Jesus said, if any man would love me, I and my father will come and make our abode in him. Jesus didn't say the Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Son. Because there are three persons in the Godhead, isn't it? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. There are three persons in the Godhead. But he didn't say the Holy Spirit will come. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is already inside you. And the Holy Ghost is God. I can fully say now, God, is, the Father is in me. But he's in me by the Holy Ghost. I can also say Jesus lives in me. But he's in me by the Holy Spirit. But yet, they are three distinctive persons, yet one. Praise the Lord. So at new birth, I was given the Holy Ghost. They gave me the Holy Spirit to begin to instruct me, to help me to change, to help me to love Jesus. The day you gave your life to Christ, you didn't love Jesus. You only believed in him. You only believed in him. You cannot love somebody you don't know. You can't love somebody you don't know. The reason why you met your husband, hi, nice and dandy. <laughs> your father said, don't marry, you say, I must marry. Your mother said, don't marry, you say, I must marry him. One year after, say, eh? Where is he gone? Why? You are knowing him now. <laughs> <laughs> you are knowing him now. Praise the Lord. But is he your husband? Yes. So, believing in Jesus and being betrothed to Jesus, because right now we are all betrothed to him. We are engaged. That's what, the, that's what that means. We are engaged to marry him. That's what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say we have married him. The Bible says we are engaged. I know engagement can be broken. Yes. Uh -huh. When Joseph saw that Mary was pregnant, what did he want to do? He wanted to pray the thing, put her away quietly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost, Jesus is saying, if any man will love me. Now, if you go to the book of John, First John, John defines loving Jesus. Jesus also defined loving him. He said, if you love me, do what? If you love me, do what? So if you don't keep his commandments, you don't love him. And if you don't love him, him and his father will not come and make a boat in you. Do you see that? In the book of 1 John, he said, if any man will love this world, he said the love of the Father is not in him. So you know what I do to myself? I try not to love the world. He says all that is in the world, the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. He said none of these things are of the Father. So how I define my own love for the Father is how much of this world I love. I can judge it. I know. The world is before me every day now. And when it calls me, I know when it's calling me. I also know when I say, mm -mm, no. I also know the day I say, okay, I'm coming. Let me just take small. <laughs> Now, if you have these knowledges, it will help you judge yourself. Because Bible says, judge yourself so that you cannot be judged. That is the essence of truth. For daily judgment. So that you can run well. It's not for daily condemnation. 
for daily judgment. Judgment before God doesn't mean, okay, you are a murderer, I will kill you now. No. Judgment before God means coming into this knowledge of God's standards. I was growing up. You come into the knowledge of his standards. So you will know his pleasure. You will know the one he doesn't like. Now, there are many things that men love that God hates. And they are not adultery. They are not fornication. They are not robbery. They are not lies. They are ways. Way of life. Attitudes. Desires. There are many. Now God won't bother you with those ways. He will first of all clean your your carnal sins first. He will win you off quarrel, strife first. When he takes that away from you, your mind, your heart is calm. Then they will start instructing you. When the heart is still beating, bah, 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 you know, write it for. Mm -hmm. The only ghost will be afraid to even respond that heart. <laughs> He'll be dodging the bullets coming from you. You know, the Holy Ghost is such a gentle being. Yes. He's not, he doesn't force us. Mm -hmm. When he just sees that, ah, you have to not drop, he says, ah, beg, I beg, just leave her, leave her. For now, for now. Then he will tell somebody, be interceding for her. Be praying, be praying. When she's calm, when I'm taking strife, Taking hot anger, taking you know impromptu fierceness from her, then I can come and start instructing her in my ways. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation, the last chapter of Revelation, let me let us read it so you will agree with me. I want, you, I want you to agree with me fully that every time you obey God, you're walking towards the Father. Revelation chapter 22. I'll read from verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall see his face shall serve him. I'm sorry. And his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some understand. Some didn't understand. But let me help us with better understanding. Verse chapter 21 from verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, I, John, saw the holy city. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven. So you see, every believer will go to heaven. But on this particular day, there are some people that will come out from heaven. And they said they are the new, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. This holy city and new Jerusalem are prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So it's either that this husband wants to marry city. Abby? Yes. Literally. Yes. Or this city and this new Jerusalem means something else. Do you think it means something else? Yes. 
What do you think it means? They cried. They cried of Christ. So all those visions that we see and see buildings, I'm going to a mansion in heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm going to a mansion in heaven. Really, it's you. That mansion is you. It's your building. Praise the Lord. And that is where God is going to dwell in forever. God will not come from come out from that place where he has been hiding for eternity. Who God, who no man can see or has seen will suddenly come down. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that his tabernacle will be with men. Now, if you miss this abode, you will regret for eternity. Even though you might not be in hell. Praise the Lord. So, because of this singular reason, we beg Christians to walk. Praise the Lord. We beg Christians to do what? To walk. Because the closer you come to the Father on the earth, the nearer you are to Him on the earth, the nearer you will be to Him in that place. The scripture says, it says, draw near to me. And I will do what? So if you don't draw near to me, what will I do? Will I draw near? No. I won't. Unfortunately, we don't learn these things where we go to. We are just interested in how to make money. We are just interested in how we can buy the latest cars. And there has been a promise of provision if you can just follow him. It's, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. If you can just follow him, there's a promise of supply. He didn't promise us millionaires. He didn't say he will have the biggest car in town. He didn't say he will have the biggest house in town, but he said he will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If my son is in the universe, another person is paying his school fees. Has that need or universe not been met? It doesn't matter who takes care of the bill. It means nothing. Praise the Lord. So for this purpose, we are running. Say with me, we are running. We are running. Say with me, we are running. We are running. Say with me, we are running. We are running. Say with me, we are running. We are running. Hallelujah. Now we have found our purpose. You know, people do seminars, find your purpose in life. Come and discover your destiny. You are an event uh, manager. You are the best doctor in the world. You are called to be the top lawyer. Leave those things. Those things are the works of our hands. And their purpose is for eating. Just to put food on the table. Praise the Lord. And cover our nakedness. Praise the Lord. And give to those who don't have. Praise the Lord. This one is the hard one. This, this one is the one they say you should labor for. Labor to forgive my husband. Labor to love my in-laws. Labor to love my enemies. Labor to love those who despitefully use me. Labor to... Bible says I should give my body to my husband. He said I should not deny him. I will labor. I will see the man, the wicked man hard man. But no matter what he does to me during the day, at night, he will not keep his hands away. We are women now. Look, let me tell you, every woman here, I don't know what it is you've gone through. If you've gone to poverty, I've been there. If you have felt like running away from your husband, I have, I have tried. Eh? I know go. I don't go. But but he there inside my heart to go. You understand? So you will say her, see her. She's talking because she I don't No. I I if you have been naked, if you have if you are here, you are buying Africa. I have bought Africa before. Yeah, Ben. Yes. <laughs> I've bought 
it. I, I, I know the London bill and the American bill. <laughs> and I know that the London bill is superior to the American bill. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> eh? If you have bought Isha tomatoes, if that is the only thing you buy, uh, is it Isha? Isha. Isha. <laughs> I have bought Isha. I bought Isha. I go when quickly, when they are selecting it, when it's fresh, I go and chatter it with the Esha tatashi and the Esha pepper. I carry all of them together, wash it quick, 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 put inside blender, blender, put them on fire. If you have cooked without meat before, I have. I will go and buy bone, biscuit bone, from the butchers. I will tell them to knock it. They will knock it, scatter it very well. Luckily, I had pressure cooker. So I'll bring it, put inside pressure cooker, put garlic, put pepper, put ginger, put salt, put maggi, I will boil it. When I finish boiling it, I will throw away the bones. I will use the water, I will make stew, I will make jollof rice, I will make soup. And it will be sweet. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we have gone through some of these schools. And God has brought us out of all. Out of all. If when you see your husband now, you will say, see his head. Good for nothing, man. He can't even provide for his house. He can't even pay his children's school fees. You don't say it with your Some say with your mouth. But you, you don't say it with your man because you have been hearing, humble, humble, humble yourself, be me, be me. So you can't talk it, you can only say it here. Your heart, I've been there. If you have sent your, your children have been sent out of school because you couldn't pay school fees. I've been there. I've even kept them at home for one term, bought blackboard. I taught them myself. I said, let me teach you myself. You can't pay school fees. I'm tired of begging. Second term. When I enter second term, I'm paying first term school fees. When all the women are coming, everybody thinks that. We're all paying the same fees together. Mm, it's areas. I'm trying to clear the areas. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Say, for the Lord God delivers them from them all. All. So, if you're a woman here, if you're a woman, how many women do we have in the house? Let me see. Hallelujah. If you're a woman here, you are born again. The Holy Ghost lives on your inside. You have one will, one knowledge. You need to know the knowledge of his will concerning you as a wife. So long as you agreed to marry. If you didn't marry, you don't have a problem. You know, Paul said, I wish like all men were like myself. And when you are single and they are telling you not to marry, you say, I oh, no, wicked woman. She's already in her husband's house. That's why she's telling me it's better to be single. <laughs> ah, you know? But when you enter now, you have entered now. In this our kingdom, in this our kingdom, in this our kingdom, when you enter, you don't enter home. They put a uh, cherubim at the gate with flaming swords. No way out. <laughs> you can't enter. You can't exit, though. If you exit, you won't see the Father. If you exit, you won't see Him. Too much loss for eternity. You can be here for 40 years, 50. What of eternity? One million years, we have only said good morning. If you exit, you won't enter. He said, I hate it. I hate putting away. I hate divorce. I hate it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So in this our kingdom, when you are inside that prison, it's not you are not expected to be bitter. If you are bitter there, you won't see the father. Home. I'm expected to be joyful inside there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm expected to be what? Joy. Joyful. I'm expected to be at peace inside there. All these things will deny me of seeing his face. I'm telling you the truth. He said the kingdom of God is what? It's righteousness. It's peace. And it's what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. So inside that house where I am, some people they will relocate from the master bedroom and move to another room. I was talking to a woman yesterday. She has moved to another room. She says she's tired of the room. And when she's inside the room, the room is suffocating. It's as if she, she wants to suffocate. I say, ah, is it your husband's job now to wash the curtains and make the room what it's supposed to be? How come this room you have been sleeping inside for 12 years? Only two months ago, if you enter the room, they will feel as if they want to kill you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know of a lady one time when she's going to bed, she wears wear jeans trousers. Yeah, all right. No, life, I'm telling you the truth. She wear jeans. And then in the morning, we use pancake. And pancake in face. And cover up. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I want us to, I want us to interact. I want you in here to ask questions. Because there's no escape. There's no escape. The purpose for this meeting is that if there's bitterness in your heart, by the time you are living today, you are more than willing to let it go. Amen. If there's unforgiveness in your heart, if there's disdain, you know, some of us we disdain our men. You know, you just look at them and they've reduced to nothing. You have just reduced the man to a worthless yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Nothing. Before you leave here today, you will upgrade him. Amen. You upgrade him Amen. as the Lord of the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give us, I want to throw the floor open. But before I please, I want to share just one small testimony. There was a school where I was ministering. And I began to teach some of these things to help women. And there was a particular, particular woman that was fighting so badly with her husband. It was so bad and it was diabolical and spiritual. They said she's the one who is against her husband, who wants to kill him and who doesn't want him to prosper. When she's not at home, in fact, they would actually bring herbalists or native doctors into her house. They would do all their things, put all their pots and all their things in one room, lock the room, Nobody enters that room. Nobody enters that room. So the line between her and her, her husband had been sharply drawn. There was no love, there was no friendship, there was nothing, there was no communication, there was nothing. She was a Christian. In fact, he was all, they were both Christians. But you see, he had backslidden because of issues of life. So when she's going for fellowship, she'll kind of have a, mm, let me go for fellowship. I'm going to serve my God. She was walking away from God, hmm. not knowing. So when she heard me, one day she called me and she began to just, you know, she was, she was frustrated. At this time, the man had left the house, had not spoken to them, doesn't pick her calls. He had been away for about a month or so. She didn't know exactly where he was. The only times he had picked her calls were the times that her daughter said, I want to talk to my daddy. How he would know it was his daughter, she doesn't know. But as soon as that girl began to cry, I want to speak to my daddy. When she dies, he would pick. And then she would talk to her. He would talk to his daughter. After talking to his daughter, he would cut off the phone. He won't ask after her. He won't nothing. So when I began to counsel her over the phone, and as I counseled her, there were specific messages I had preached. I said, go, to, go and get those messages and listen to them. 
and do what is in that message. Say with me, do. 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 Say with me, do. Do. The cure is in the doing, mm. not in the hearing. The healing is in the doing. And the heart does it first before the hands and legs will do it. Praise the Lord. So she left. When she got there, she couldn't get the CDs. There was another woman who had heard these things and had begun to practice them and saw the change in her home sat down and told her all the things that I taught in that message. When she finished hearing, her heart changed immediately. I've never seen a miracle like that before. Her heart changed immediately. She went home. She was lying down on her bed and she began to think. She remembered her husband's favorite food. At this time, she had stopped cooking for him. She remembered his favorite food and then she, was, she had made up her mind that the day he comes back, she was going to make that food for him. And, you know, all the other things that she wanted to do just to show him that she still loved him. Just that changing of mind from nowhere, her phone rang. 30 minutes after she took that decision, her phone rang. And it was her husband. It was her husband. Yeah. Calling me. Oh, is it the chair you want to talk to? No, it's you I want to talk to. So he spoke to her. They were on the phone for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the phone disconnected. She thought he won't call back. He called back until he exhausted everything he had to say. And then he now told her, I'm coming back tomorrow. She was like, ah, no, don't come. Because at this time, she had now, he had told her what he went to do and where he was. He said, no, 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 finish. Don't, don't be in a hurry. Take it in. He said, no, I'm coming. I'm leaving here today, today. I'm coming home. I was at the airport in the lounge waiting for my flight when she called me. She said, Sister she, I have not, I didn't know the word of God works like this. She said, I've never seen this in my life. I didn't call him. I didn't even pray. All I just did was I changed my mind. I changed my heart. I will do it. Praise the Lord. I want to stop now. I want us to interact. If you have questions, ask. Sometimes we need help. We're here to help one another. If you have questions, ask. If you have experience that will move us forward, Share it. But I found out that the major things that hinder women is money. But I've also discovered that if you don't solve the problem when there is no money, when money comes, there will still be problems. It might even get worse. So it means truly, truly, the real problem really, really, really is not money. It's me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.